This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2021 Palomino Columbus fifth wheel model 382 FB. Okay, so now this is not a floor plan video or a sales video. This is just a crude, simple video that shows you some of the uh, appliances and features and how they work. All right, so here we go. So this obviously that's where you crank down your spare tire. Now these these rear slide outs you can you can crank these manually. You get a crank. It's in the front front compartment. Um, if you're able to see all the way through this hole here, you can see that when you get to the frame, there's a, a, a shaft with a pin through it. Uh, you would just put the crank on there. And this cranks in the opposite slide out, the off door slide out, and then uh, there's also a hole on the other side that will will uh, crank this one in. So just keep that in mind. You can do that. Okay, and also you, we have a automatic leveling system called a uh, level up by Lippert, and uh, the, the controls. Uh, there's some controls on the outside, which I'll show you when we get to it, that you can use to uh, to operate it. You also can operate it from the touchpad inside the trailer. Now, the touchpad inside the trailer has more features when you're operating it, but we'll go through it, okay? Uh, your, your steps, obviously, you can adjust the length of the legs here by pushing this lever up there, and you can just slide them up and down individually to get, get, the, uh, get how you want it for the terrain. Uh, this is your your water heater it's an on-demand water heater I'll show you uh, how it operates inside of course there is a master switch here just so you know okay um, also you have a vacuum here and then this is this bag is filled all with the the, the uh, components of the vacuum all the attachments that sort of thing um, if you were to pull this off just so you know there is a, there are buttons for the here let me show you for the slide room and the awning so sure you can operate it from the touch panel inside the trailer but you can also operate it here All right. okay so also this is a kill switch for the two you have two um, 27 series deep cycle marine batteries and this switch will disconnect them from the uh, from the coach so uh, if you put it into storage you can always shut that off and and no and therefore phantom power like the power that um, for example that the, the uh, carbon monoxide LP gas detector is hardwired to the battery so and so it'll always draw power so this would just shut that off so you don't you, you don't drain down as quickly but all other times you want it on obviously because you want the battery to charge all right so let's move around here you have two uh, 30 pound LP tanks um, these are your 27 series batteries this is the reservoir for your uh, hydraulic system of course these are the cranks I told you about this is just a three-quarter inch crank here this is the one that goes on the shaft with the pin through it just so you know okay okay this is just another LP tank behind that door there okay so here we are on the off door side basement door this is the the auto level pad that I told you about the one for the outs on the outside there the, the touch panel inside has more options but to turn this on, you, you push both up and down at the same time. So you go see it turned on. And you're going to auto level, right? Um, when you're retracting, you'll always retract a hitch height. Hitch height is the last um, height it was at before you auto leveled. So it'll always remember after you unhitch from your tow vehicle and then you auto level, it'll remember what that height was just one, one time back. So. Um, it, theoretically you should be able to slide right underneath it with your tow vehicle and hook up you know I, I know the terrain has something to do with it too whether there's dips or high spots on the, on the dirt but but nevertheless that if you if you, you were to push retract all it'll retract all of them including the front uh, um, landing gear and it'll kind of nosedive all right these are the directions and it says here matter batteries must be fully charged to operate jacks keep that in mind um, when you when you look at the inside on the panel, it'll tell you how much uh, you know. Let's say it's 12.3 or whatever in your in your uh, or 13.4 is pretty common in your your battery. So you want to charge all the way or it'll fault. Now this has an inverter too. Now um, you know there's converters which convert uh, 110 AC to 12 volt DC, and then there's inverters that convert 12 volt DC up to or over to 110, 120 AC. 
So that's what this does. There's probably only one thing hooked to this, and that would be the refrigerator. I haven't looked at the manuals here as I didn't prep it, but I'm sure that that's the case. So basically, when your, your batteries are on, this will send power to your refrigerator to keep it going. When you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle will, will charge the batteries and keep it going. When you're plugged in, your power converter, which is the opposite, opposite of this inverter, I'll show you that when we get inside also, but your power converter will be set in 12 volts. So it always keeps it charged up. Or if we set it, yeah. It's only, it's only 100 and some degrees <laughs> right now. <laughs> I'm getting crazy. I'm trying to focus here. Okay, so let me look around here. This, that, that sign there just says it's pre-wired for solar. And there's going to be also be a port on the roof where you can hook solar panels to. That's all. Okay. All righty. So, this is your water. First of all, this is a water filter canister. You get a filter with it um, and a wrench. The thing is, if you use the filter, it's a carbon black filter, so it takes out chlorine and it'll take out some of the taste when you're using well water, that sort of thing. It doesn't do total dissolved solids or... Uh, anything like that, like our reverse osmosis would, but it still cleans the water up quite a bit. The thing is, if you use it, you got to throw it out when you winterize in the fall, and then after you dewinterize in the spring, you put a new one in. So you got to change it every year. Um, okay. These, these levers here, these knobs, or whatever, whatever the term is, these oblong knobs, how's that? Um, you can put them to different configurations, like right now, for dry camping, that's how it's set right now. So we're pumping water out of the fresh water tank right now because you can see, if you look at this drawing here, you can see that they're, they uh, mirror that. Um, nine times out of ten, you're going to be using city water. You're just going to hook the city water right to, he right to here, turn it on, and you're ready to go. You would have it in this configuration. The only difference is the green one will be turned horizontal, as you can see. Um, when you want to fill your fresh water tank, let's say you're going to a campground that does not have plumbing on the campsite, you can put in this configuration and fill the fresh water tank. Then when you get there, you can put it in this configuration and run and pump out of the pump water out of your own tank. So also to winterize it is this configuration and to sanitize it, which is just um, pulling um, uh, pulling some kind of some kind of cleaner through, uh, disinfectant through. Some people just use bleach. Uh, some people use Spring Fresh and other other products, but that's how that's the position you would use to, to clean out your system. Um, I call, like I point out, this is the city water hookup here. This is a black tank flush here. So after you dump, you got a, a gray tank called a galley tank. You got a second a second gray tank here, and then you have your black tank here. Black tank is obviously toilet water and waste. The other, the gray, are sink and shower water. So after you after you opened it, the black one and dumped it like that. You always dump the black one first, and then use the gray to kind of wash out the hose. But if you leave it in the open position, you can put your hose on right here. Turn it on and it'll spray out the inside of your black tank, which is a, um, a really good thing. It'll clean off your sensors, that sort of thing. But like it says here on this sticker, always have this valve open before you turn the water on. Okay, and that's just a sprayer hooked up. And there's your, your, your uh, dump uh, line, of course. Now, the thing is, there's a, this refrigerator has an ice maker, so you have, to turn, you have to turn it on and off when you winterize and dewinterize. So make sure if you're not getting ice, you want to turn on the the ice maker. Also keep in mind that I just noticed a minute ago that there's another valve that is on right now. You see it right here? It's on right now, but you can shut off the water going to the refrigerator there too, just so you know that it's there, okay? And there's the, the hole to crank the other slide out in like I showed you. This is your your 30 or your 50 amp uh, power system here. You just pull this out manually and then you'll use this button to crank it back in. Okay. Um, you're pre-wired for a backup camera. If you want one, we sell them here. Um, either way, if you get one, it has to be a Furion camera that fits that housing. Also, you have a ladder, which is great because you should inspect the seals on your roof and the roof in general every 90 days. So you go up there, have someone else go up there every 90 days. You check out the sealant uh, for cracking or separation. You check out the, the vent covers to see if they got cracked by a low branch or damaged by um, road debris flying up there or something like that. Check out the roofing material. Just, just give it a good inspection. And some years, sometime, you're going to go up there and see an issue. And when you do, make sure you get it taken care of immediately. Okay. So you got pow two power awnings, of course, outside speakers. Um, so also, there's probably a TV hookup up here, too, that I didn't see. 
Yeah, right here. So a satellite and campground cable and power. So you could hook up a TV out here if you wanted to. All right, let's go inside. I think the AC is going. I sure hope. Okay, sure is. Whoops. Okay, let me find some lights here. So we'll go to the touch panel. We'll go to um, home. Get to home, that is. Or just go to monitor panel then. Alright, again to go home. Maybe we are home and I just don't understand it. Okay. Lighting right there. And there should be one that lets you turn them all on at the same time. Let's see. Uh, well, there is a way to do it. Let me let me back off. Maybe it's on the original screen. Maybe I'm just missing it. All oh, right there. Wait a minute. I'm just coming out of my heat stroke here, so bear with me. Okay, let's go through it this way. If you get a, you'll, you'll get everything all now, but I'm not going to go through all the functions other than you obviously you have to turn your water pumper up on. You have tank heaters on this one so you can stay out longer in colder weather. Your tank levels. Okay. You can do your slide rooms from here. You can do your leveling from here. ceiling light. Boy, I know that you have to, we'll just have to take my word for it that there is a a, um, a switch that turns all the lights on and off at one time. Just, I'm just having a hard time finding it here, but I went to your leveling screen and um, this is the same way. You push auto level, you know, and you can retract. You also can, whenever you select anything, you'll push enter so you can scroll through auto retract, manual mode, which is all individually and that sort of thing, um, you can, every time you select that, you push enter, okay? But nine times out of ten, you're just gonna auto level and then you're gonna return to hitchhike, okay? All right. Okay, let me see here. I'm gonna get some other lights on. This is a little pantry, like a butler's pantry. I know I have one for my butler, so, you know. Um, you have a, a chiller, a beverage cooler, and plenty of storage in here, of course. Um, your refrigerator works on 110 AC. You should always travel in here somewhere as a, as a, a thing you screw on there to, to um, keep the door shut. I saw it earlier. Okay, I'll have to show it to you when I get to it. Um, there is a, a piece you could screw on here, unless the straps, no, it has a, if you look right in here, um, you would screw the a, a rod in here and it's got a knob on it that keeps the drawer in both doors um, closed when you're traveling. So let's have to wait and find out where the heck it's at. That's a filter for you, or actually it's liquid filter, isn't it? Yeah, it's a water filter. Okay. I can always blame uh, the, the heat for my, uh, my issues here. So, okay. Um, I'll make sure that that piece is in here. I know it's here. I saw it earlier. It's tucked away in a drawer somewhere. But always lock this these doors and drawers shut when you're traveling. Otherwise, it'll, obviously, it'll get all dinged up. Uh, your uh, microwave works like any other microwave. It vents to the outside. Um, so you operate the vent here and just has a light here. So it has two speeds for the vent and uh, so that that'll take all the uh, if you're if you're doing something cooking here especially frying or something you must have that on obviously. Um, your burners 
Let's see, they just, you just put them, I don't know if he's got the gas on yet, but let me see. I had just shut it on and off, so I'm going to just give it a minute, there it goes, for it to get through there. There we go. So now the line is purge of air, and we got, we got LP in each one. So you just push it, or put it to, the, holy cow, you just put it to the temperature and then push it in to spark it, okay? The oven works like any other oven. You have some storage behind here, obviously. You, can, you got a lever here, and it'll swings out. And uh, keep in mind that if you're using the antenna, you always want this on. You can actually shut it on and off, like going like that. But whenever you're using the antenna, you want that green light to be on. That's important, or you'll get a lousy signal, or none at all. Okay. Okay. So you're. All these have a remote here. Maybe it's in this drawer here. I swear. Oh, there they are over there. Oh, that's everything we're looking for. See? This is for your refrigerator to keep it shut. And these are your remotes. This is the sound system remote, the TV remote, and this small one here is the refrigerator, or the, gosh almighty, the fireplace remote, okay? This is a sensor for your tires. It will um, um, tell you uh, basically uh, the tire pressure and the temperature of your of your wheel so uh, uh, it's a good thing to have we'll show you how that works when you come to pick it up all right so your um this is a subwoofer here obviously so your sound system has a fm radio it has bluetooth so you can stream wirelessly from your phone or tablet um, it has all the features that you would need three different speaker zones a b and c here a is here b is up front and c is outside so it's got everything um, you need when it comes to, to uh, um, entertainment. Your, your fireplace, you can see right now it's flashing H. Hopefully you can see that. Now I can switch that to off and to low. That's the fan speed, right? Um, also, you, you can set the temperature. It goes up and, up and down in five degree increments. You can set the appearance of the fire, like so. And it has a timer, so you can you can set it on cool mornings. You can set it to turn on, you know, 20 minutes before you get up in the morning, and it runs on 110 AC, so you won't be using up any of your limited uh, uh, LP gas onboard LP tank from your onboard LP tank. So you can you can run it without without using up uh, your your limited amount of gas. So that's good. Okay, now this pulls out its two. You first of all you pull the back off, right? So you fell on, you set the cushions aside. This is two separate beds in the sense that um, you can fold them to different positions. There are two legs on it, remember. When you, pull, when you fold it out, there's a leg in the middle, too. So you got, it's kind of hard to see, but you've got to put that down, too. Otherwise, it'll sag right there. So, but it's a, it's a nice, nice foam uh, mattress, so it's actually not bad at all, especially compared to the way they, the way they used to be, I mean, with the springs and the, and the bar in your back all the time. So, okay. Your um, uh, theater seating, obviously self-explanatory. There's your lumbar support, that sort of thing. I believe that's what that is. So. All right. Your table, you should always have the chair strapped down, of course. Um, that's important. This device here is your um, power converter. So this does the opposite of the as the inverter does. I showed you the inverter up front in the, in the basement. This this takes 110 and converts it to 12 volt DC. So everything that runs on 12 volts when you're plugged in runs from this inverter. Also, this is a battery charger, so it'll always sense what your what your batteries up front need, and it'll keep them both charged. It'll send uh, 10 amps if it needs it. If they're charged, it'll just trickle a couple, but it'll always keep it topped off. Okay. Okay, so that's telling you about the One Connect. That that's that's just an app you can put on your phone to operate this panel. Okay, this is a sensor, just so you know. That's for the temperature. Okay, that's for for that. Okay. Now your your vacuum down here. You can just sweep the dirt over by here and step on it. It'll suck it right in, which is kind of neat. Especially you can in a when you're out in the sandy dirt dirty campground you're always sweeping so all right 
So we have another TV up here, of course. Just a remote. Your bed, do you have some storage underneath? And probably, of course, I have to look before I say anything, yes. Two chairs, so you can put them uh, by the dinette table so you have room for four people to sit. Okay. Um, that's the sensor for this zone. There's two zones in this trailer. Okay. Your bathroom is huge as trailers go. Um, this is where you operate your on-demand water heater from. So it's self-explanatory. You're just going to turn it on and set the temperature. Okay. It's uh, all on-demand. Um, you also have a, a four-speed fan, exhaust fan here. And uh, always run that with the shower because you want to pull the humidity out. These things are built super tight now and you don't want to create an environment where you know um, mold or, or mildew could grow so you always want to vent it out when you're showering. And there's another one here, it's the same fan, except you have a remote here and you just turn it on and it'll open the lid, you can set the speed, do whatever you want from here. It's a great feature because you need a ladder to get to it otherwise. Also down here is your carbon monoxide LP gas detector. It should always be green like it is. If not, you get it serviced. And um, if it goes off, you obviously take everybody outside, um, leave the door open, shut the gas off, and figure out what's going on. Like I said, that's LP gas and carbon monoxide. Okay, back to the bathroom. So I'm sure you know this, you must have owned trailers before having a nice trailer like this. So um, yeah, the, the black tank is directly below, right? So on the flush pedal, um, that water is going into the black tank right below. Now, you can't use the black tank dry. So uh, by dry, if you flushed it, then it's dry, right? If you if you used the, the uh, if you dumped it and flushed it, it's dry. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and water. You'll come in here with a dose of chemical. You'll throw it right in the bowl, and then step on the pedal. Water will go swirling into the bowl or into the tank past the bowl. And um, you're going to put about a gallon of water in the tank with the chemical. You do that every time you start off with an empty, uh, dry black tank. Because the bottom line is you can't run this thing without water or chemical, or the smell will be overwhelming. Plus, it can get hard, and you have to chisel it, and you know it's, it's a mess. So always make sure you put some water. Some people use more than a gallon. It's up to you. It doesn't have to be exact. All right. Very nice. A wonderful trailer. That's all I can say to you. Sometimes these things amaze me, and this is one of them. Two people can live like a king and queen in this, for example. Um, you're pre pre plumbed for a uh, um, washer dryer combo. So if you want one, it would fit right there. We do install those, uh, you know, but it, we can we can definitely put a stack in there if you need it. Um, this is huge, huge storage like you never see. I'm just trying to find a light switch here. Maybe I have to do this. Yes. Okay. So you have a huge storage. You see all the hang things you can hang in here. Plus you got shoes, I suppose. That's what my wife would use it for. Um, I would have nothing to say about it. So that, that would be where shoes go. Okay. Keep in mind this trailer has a couple of GFCI plugs. This is one of them. They're all wired, every plug, including the ones outside, are wired through a GFCI. So if you're using something outside and it pops, you'd come in here and reset it. All right. I think that kind of uh, does it. I'm looking. Starting to cool down finally. Okay. So let me look. Yeah, I think, I think that pretty much covers it. So um, first, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. And second of all, please remember to inspect your roof and all the seals on the trailer, but mainly the roof seals and the roof sealant and the vent covers and all the things we talked about. Do that on a regular basis and you'll never have an issue with, with the water damage or anything like that. It's all about inspecting it. You inspect it and, and inspect it and inspect it, but odds are you won't have to do anything for years and years. You, but that's why you inspect it. You just want to make sure that everything is good. So, Okay, thank you.